When Steve Jobs came back to Apple in 1997, having been fired, he first made the Macintosh into a great, insanely wonderful computer. And then he said, what's next? He realized that the first decade of the 21st century, he was going to have to transform Apple into being a consumer products company, something that was going to make really great devices that would connect to your computer. The computer would be the hub for all of your content. When he started working on the iPod, the main thing he kept doing was eliminating things, eliminating buttons, making it simpler, making it so it was so intuitive you didn't need a manual. He was able to do that because he was able to link the iPod to the Macintosh and do an end-to-end -end solution the way companies like Sony or Microsoft or Dell couldn't do. When Steve Jobs created the iPod and he had the software that connected to it, which was iTunes, he realized most people just ripping off music, whether it was Napster or Kazaa or any of the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing programs, people were getting their music for free. That shouldn't have really bothered them. It made the iPod more valuable, but he really did care about music. So he wanted to find a way, he called it good karma, that you could get your music and get it simply and cheaply. So he created the notion of 99 cents to buy a song. Most of the music labels were totally against it. But they had very little choice because it was either uh, having your music taken by Napster for free or going along with the iTunes store. So every day he would be calling the heads of the record labels and some of the bands and saying, here, come look at this. This is why you have to be a part of it. And soon he had persuaded them all. <laughs> iPod was enormously successful. Millions sold. Soon it was more than 40% of Apple's revenues. So Steve Jobs became worried. Success was not something he liked to rest on. He liked to believe that if you didn't cannibalize yourself, somebody else would cannibalize you. So he's always willing to say, what are we going to do next, even if it might hurt an older product. And what he figured out was that people were using their cell phones as cameras and that was destroying the camera market, soon they'd be using their cell phones as music players. So he said, we've got to make a cell phone and we've got to make it elegant and as beautiful as the iPod. And that's how the iPhone came about. Now, while he was creating the great phone, they were coming up with something called multi-touch, a thing where you can use two different fingers or your different fingers to move the screen around and make it scroll. And they were doing that for a tablet, but he realized he had to get the phone done first. But then he takes multi-touch and decides, I can make a bigger tablet out of it as well. Each one of those innovations could have hurt the previous products of Apple. But Steve Jobs was never worried about cannibalizing his previous products. He said, it was like Bob, it was like Bob Dylan said, if you're not busy being born, you're busy dying. And he always wanted to reinvent himself. Mm -hmm.